Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, live session with us. Uh, we have lecturers with you. Um, today, uh, we are going to have Mr. Ong. I believe that there are many people waiting for him. Very long queue already. So uh, first of all, uh, my name is Jack. I'm a lecturer in the uh, Sunday tests. Okay, And uh, to give you a quick brief on actually um, what we are supposed to do, all right, so um, I'm going to show you some of the subjects that we are doing in ICW. OK, so um, can we have the subjects? All right, so um, I'm a lecturer in Sunday tests. So um, there are 15 papers here. All right, so we are divided into certificate level, professional level, and advanced level. OK, so for example, I'm teaching the uh, business technology and finance, um, and as well as uh, business strategy and technology as well as strategic business management. And the man of the hour, Mr. Ong, is teaching assurance at the certificate level, and then moving on to uh, audit and assurance. Okay, And of course, uh, he's also teaching two advanced level papers, uh, corporate reporting and case study. So Mr. Ong, he's an ICW associate member since the year 2000, and is now a fellow member. He started your Sunday test in 2004 and has numerous 100% passes, many classes, all right, and several world prizes. And then sometimes we also lose count. All right. So um, we would like to now invite Mr. Ong to share with us all right, his journey uh, from the time he started off doing ICW in UK all right, up to now. I believe that uh, he's a very successful businessman. And on top of that, he's uh, always shuttling up and down his hometown all right, to uh, some way, okay, uh, to produce the many world prizes for us. All right, so can we welcome Mr. Ong? Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Mr. Ong. How are you? Hey, Jack. Hey, fine. How are you? Uh -huh. Hey, I'm not successful. Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> In the eyes of all your students, you are the most successful one, okay? No, no, no. I'm definitely not, okay? Yeah. All right, super um, role model for all our students. Nah, I'm just surviving, basically surviving. Okay. But like I do, all right, go back memory lane. I think mm -hmm. when yep. I was uh, down in uh, uni, I think like most any student, obviously we are clueless, we are lost, we have no idea what we want to do in life. And uh, this was during my final year of uni when I realized, hey, it's time to start working. And therefore, I've attended many career fairs in the UK, and um, which was obviously organized by the uni, but it's not as extensive as what it is today, which uh, I think the Malaysian Society in the UK, they organize it with all the extensive, uh, beautiful fairs over there. But uh, when I was there, I was advised by the career people there, obviously, to pick up accountancy, because mm -hmm. I did accountancy degree. And uh, one thing led on to the other, Never really thought myself to be an accountant, to be honest. <laughs> All right. And I, after graduating, then I decided to work for a research company, mm -hmm. basically researching on uh, companies and the financial statements. And uh, I think I was a little bit handicapped. And therefore, I decided to pursue on the ICW program. So that's how it all started. And uh, with the ICW program, obviously, I would be able to interpret the financial statements a lot, lot better. And it was also advised by the owner of the research company. Was he a chartered accountant as well? I think, like most of my students, and uh, okay, and uh, after three. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my, my former, who was the chartered accountant? Sorry, Jack. Your, 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 Jack. your uh, employer, your boss. He wasn't. He was, he was not a chartered accountant. He was just an economist. Okay. And, uh, but obviously, he advised me to just go on and uh, do the professional accountancy, which obviously would be beneficial. And uh, that's how I started. And then I went over to Audit World for three years, completed my articleship. And then uh, I jumped at the opportunity to work uh, in an engagement for Dana Harta, 
when uh, Malaysia went through the crisis in 1997 to year 2000, that, that range. Okay. And, uh, and over there, I think I learned a lot. And uh, obviously, with the accounting skills, then obviously I was engaged because of my ICW background. All right. And uh, yeah. And then after that, I decided to venture into property development. And I'm still there until today. But I'm only a boutique developer. Okay? I'm not a big time developer like some people. <laughs> just a very, very boutique one, small one, do small projects. Okay. Just be and, uh, and be married. That's about it, I think, in terms of career. And of course, I've over this whole time, obviously, accountancy has helped me, you know, analyzing numbers, playing with numbers, crunching with numbers, deciding whether to pursue on with a project or not. And uh, of course, it helps me investing, raising loans from the banks to do my bridging finance and uh, stuff like that. Okay. And, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's been wonderful and a uh, very nice path that I've gone through and uh, experienced a lot of things which I think uh, maybe a lot of people cannot experience. The ups and downs of uh, having a business. Yeah, business. correct. What about yeah. uh, your journey as a lecturer? How, when did you start yeah. teaching? I honestly started teaching somewhere about, I think, about 18 years ago. Okay. Right? So that was really long back, I think about 2002, plus minus 2001, 2002, mm -hmm. because I was approached by an accountancy firm, uh, accountancy qualification, to write a textbook for the Ah, all right. Yeah, and it was an audit. And uh, yeah, and then I think I started that, and I realized that uh, lecturing was actually a very, very noble job. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Ability to transfer whatever I've learned uh, to younger generation, the future leaders of this country. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. experience. And then when uh, Sunway contacted me in uh, 2004, then okay. I, yeah, I hopped on it. And uh, I've been with Sunway yeah, until today. And I believe you are the pioneer, pioneer for ICW in Sunway, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I was, yeah, uh, 2004 until today. Yes, all the way from... Uh, all the way so you're the first one that then now you're still with us all right so taking yeah. all too many papers all right so you are the best person to actually do all those hey no no, no. <laughs> I only utilize a few papers but uh that's about it uh, you know? but uh okay yeah. so, so i guess uh, yeah. Perhaps you could also take us through, you know, the subjects that you teach because um, from one level to the next, all right, because you have got experience of taking the students through certificate to professional to yeah. advance, right? So maybe yeah. you could take us through those uh, papers that you teach. Yeah, sure, sure. All right. So at the basic level, which is the CFAP certificate level, I obviously teach AS, which is uh, assurance. Mm -hmm. And obviously assurance is the fundamental or the backbone or the core knowledge of our audit so basically this paper is broken down into four little bits whereby um the introduction and the concept of assurance and then the second bit will be this thing called internal controls which are mm -hmm. basically procedures that a company should have so that uh, they can they are able to meet their objectives and the third part of our assurance obviously is to gather evidences because I think as an auditor, we have to gather a lot of a, a sufficient appropriate evidences to verify the client's financial statements. Mm -hmm. And importantly, I think that's when we start embedding ethics as well. Yeah, so yes, would be basically a very, very rote learning. So in terms of a, a lot of memorizing and then... A, and if you that's know for the certificate level. Yeah, that's a certificate level site. Okay. And I'm... Uh, all right, and then this paper is actually basically examined with uh, multiple choice, 50 questions, okay. and uh, I think with a simple basic understanding of it, it should not be an issue, uh, this paper. And then we move on to the next level, which is uh, on a pillar basis, obviously, it will be audit and assurance. All right. And uh, assurance is an extension, obviously, of, uh, ass uh, of assurance in the certificate level. And over here, I think the syllabus is broken down in three bits. So the first one is obviously ethics again. And uh, whatever that we've learned in the assurance, we have to now start applying them into scenarios. So scenarios at this level, again, I still believe is quite straightforward and uh, it's not bad, okay? And a second part of this paper, obviously, is audit planning. And that is obviously the biggest chunk of it. 
This is where I believe full-time students will have a little bit of difficulty because they've got no work experience. And obviously, planning on it is going to be the most heavy-weighted syllabus, and it's going to be tough for them because they have not uh, they've not had any experience. And obviously, planning is the most important part of the audit, not the gathering evidence. Because if you get it, if you get your planning wrong, then obviously the whole process will be uh, affected badly. And then the final part of this syllabus is just completion and uh, also to issue out the audit report. So that okay. one is to follow through, pretty technical, not, not, not too bad. Okay. But uh, AA is definitely way different compared to AS because over here is a lot of application. And uh, we have uh, the way it's being examined is basically we have to assimilate all the information that's given to us. So they're all like mini case studies where the question could be like three, four pages long per question. And uh, we've got to use data analytics. Okay. So that's where I think we're keeping up in trend, whereby our clients, obviously, when we go in an audit, then our clients will just dump us with all information that we have, that they have. And obviously, probably 80% of it is redundant. Okay. Or they're just completely irrelevant. And uh, from all this information, then obviously we have to sift them to see which one are the important ones and which one are the relevant ones that we're going to use. And then from there on, with this data, then obviously we would then go on to identify what are the risk of, a, of the audit, which area of the financial statements will be of a higher risk for the auditor. And therefore, we have to then structure the problem. Okay, And once you've really structured the problem, then obviously we have to design the audit steps to mitigate this little problem. And I think that is the whole flow of what I see that we're all about, is to assimilate the information, understand those information, structure the problem, suggest solution, make your recommendations, and then you conclude. And also, although in between there, obviously we have to prioritize, we have to apply lots of skepticism, because we must understand that the financial statements have always been prepared by the clients. It has nothing to do with the auditor. Auditors are just verifying the numbers. So all the evidences are only provided by the client. So obviously we cannot, not, not to say trust 100%, but we've got to challenge them. That's where we apply the professional skepticism that we have in all our papers. Exactly, spot on. Yep. Definitely we need to have right. skepticism because we are accountable uh, to the public yeah, as a professional. Uh, we were not, not there, but to basically protect our clients, but uh, we basically have to protect the public. Uh, I think that's the main thing. A lot of people get the misconception that auditors are being appointed by clients and therefore we have to protect the clients. And I think that is a wrong concept. We are there to protect the public, all right? Because we are selling basically our name to enhance the credibility of the financial statements. Uh, and then uh, I think what is mean is that you understand we to allow them to have a, a base learning and at the same time after finishing the presentation stage, you have to start work and all with this skill that, is, uh, that has been uh, I don't know, embedded into the syllabus, then you have to start communicating with people. And that's where they start building uh, the skills, interpersonal communication with clients, you have to adapt to changes because every one has different, different characteristics. You meet a new client, You've got to go around it. You need an easy client, and your life is easy. And even your different seniors is actually very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah, so some are good seniors, some are bad seniors. Yeah. Well, we just have to adapt. That's all. I guess that's the reason why I think one of the reasons uh, our program is so popular is because uh, we embed that particular WPL into the program. Okay, yes, they exactly. actually get the experience of it. All right. So when they come to your paper, when they do it. Then they realize, hey, that's exactly what are the problems that I had with my uh, firm or with my seniors, right? And now mm -hmm. I realize that, you know, a bit of planning, a little bit of uh, understanding of what they want would actually have mm -hmm. done a better job. Okay. Definitely. So, yes, yeah. yeah. From WBL and when they meet me in the AA mm -hmm. paper, they will tell me that well, whatever I said is actually true. Okay. Maybe not right. 100%, but at least it's 85 to 90% true. All right. And uh, yep. yeah, I think they enjoyed it. And it makes them. It makes it more meaningful for them because they actually understand what they're doing. Yeah, so because most of the even other programs they would actually do the uh, placement, all right, 
at the end of the whole program, which is actually probably they have not actually uh, experienced it and not apply it properly. So, you know, when they come back, we come back to our organization, all right, come back to mm -hmm. the Sunday College, we are able to uh, show them how this could be applied better. So they actually really yeah. learn from their mistakes. Yeah. And I think they also enjoy when they can uh, communicate with different, different clients during mm -hmm. their WBL. And I think we meet up with them every month yeah, to identify any issues that they're facing. They, they really enjoy it. They really enjoy the, the WBL, yeah, without a doubt. All right. And then uh, moving on then to CR, which is the advanced stage. And uh, I do a little, the audit element of our CR paper. And it only makes sense, honestly, to combine find FAR and uh, AA together because FAR is how we prepare the financial statements and uh, to make sure that the financial statements are prepared in accordance with accounting standards and stuff like that. And AA is there to verify whether those numbers are actually have been prepared in accordance to the accounting standards. So again, it's an extension of a AA, but with more complicated scenarios. And uh, I would say yeah, very, very complex scenarios, to be honest. And um, what is that? Um, like, for example, usually when we're at the AA level, it would be just a typical manufacturing or service type of company. But I, if I'm not mistaken, one particular year where the CR exam paper was actually on a company of selling antiques. Mm -hmm. And there was an issue. On usually for us, the longer an inventory is actually in the store, then there's a higher chance that value has gone down. But antiques, on the other hand, would go up the longer it stays in store. Mm -hmm. it becomes and there's no really proper textbook at all. And our CR is actually an open exam, completely open exam. So we just have to think about it. And I always remember myself when I was doing these exams, gosh, uh, 20 plus years ago. And it was then they asked about Y2K. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, at the time when the computer was supposed to crash when you move on to year 2000, yeah. Yeah, what, is the impact, what is the impact on, a, on an audit? And uh, there was no textbook, nothing on it. We just had to yeah, think about it and write something about it. Yeah. That's where our uh, um, the, the bridging of the skills, right? Whereby you mentioned for all our professional level papers, the thing that we really want to emphasize is that the ability to be able to assimilate information. And then yes. from there on, you know, gather all this financial, non-financial, qualitative information, putting yes. them into something that is going to be meaningful and structuring them into problem solutions. Right, yep. and then pro produce a conclusion, right, to yep. be able to produce a recommendation. Yep. Right. We got a little bit of judgment before we can yes, actually correct, correct. recommendation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it is actually in, embedded in all our papers whereby the skill space is very strong. So yep. this is where um, the beauty of this program is whereby, you know, you're really teaching them how to ride a bicycle. But here yep. it's not riding a bicycle, it's learning how to think. Yes, okay. that's right. Uh, and Absolutely. then the, the, the scenarios get a little bit more and more complex as they move yep. up higher. And then the technical that's skills, they combine them together. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have their professional competency, which is one of the mm -hmm. ethical principles that we actually mm -hmm. uh, push all right, to, yep. to, 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 to engage our students to develop. All right. So it's mm -hmm. all the technical skills, the professional competence that mm -hmm. allows them to be able to be more objective right Definitely. in the decision making yep. process that's also a fundamental ethical principle so that yep. whatever decisions that they actually or advice that they give right is mm -hmm. going to stick to our the integrity of the advice right yep. again which is our principle in ethics ethics so that's the yep. beauty of the program right that yep. those five ethical principles is all yep. embedded within the syllabus yeah isn't it Definitely. yeah and the fact that uh, you got to work and uh you got to be in your final year of contract before you actually attempt your case study Yep. It's basic prioritization skills. You just have to learn how to prioritize between work and uh, play at the same time and study at the same time. And I think that is a very, very wonderful experience rather than uh, full-time studying all the way and then uh, you know, get bored of it. And then uh, so we're here, you've got to study, you've got to mingle around, you've got to work, you've got to play all together. And that, <laughs> yeah. is, that's, that, that is not easy. Yeah, mm. Because when I meet up with all my students, uh, once yeah, at the advanced stage, you'll be like, oh gosh, I'll be like working so late and all that. Yeah? And I got to come back to college and study. You know? But that's that's what it is. That's life. Okay. Yep. Until you develop develop themselves them. towards, developing themselves towards being called a true professional. All right. Yeah. In another sense, I think one of the, the, the our, our ex students were telling us that the, um, 
the adulting, right? Mm -hmm. Learning how to become an adult, right? But yeah. not just only an adult, but a professional one, right? Yeah. So, yep. And it's not easy. Yeah? It's not easy. Honestly, it is a tough process, but uh, I think it's a very meaningful process that everyone just has to go through. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, probably we can talk about something else, you know, um, because you have been with the syllabus for so long, right? Like, for example, yeah. you mentioned that uh, when you did it, they were actually testing you on the uh, Y2K, right? So yep. you know, now, because you have been um, teaching this subject for so long, right? Do you think mm -hmm. that this subject have actually, you know, uh, evolved, all right? The subjects that you have taught? Definitely. All right. When I, okay, we shall go on and have a little bit of a story again, huh? History road, okay? When I was a student doing ICW, obviously, I think at the professional stage, we had uh, five papers. Mm -hmm. And it was, still, it was pretty much still modular. Okay, so I think if you clear clear the paper, you clear it for forever, for life. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. But obviously, we had to do all five papers one go, unlike what it is today, where we can choose whichever subject we want to. Back then, it was no all or nothing. All right. Yep. We had to do all five papers one go. All right. And uh, what was it? Obviously, with that volume, then obviously the questions were not as uh, deep as what it is today. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. The surface is still pretty much the same with the syllabus, but the depth of the question and difficulty of the question is definitely way, way more difficult now. All right. And then when we move on to the advanced stage, we have four papers. Again, we had to do all or nothing. And the worst part was, if you were to fill one, you fill the entire level, All right? Okay. Whereas it's different today, okay? But again, the depth of the question today, even when I look at it today, it's still mind-boggling. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's very challenging, challenging, right? It really is, because one question is about six, seven pages long. And uh, to read it, you know, getting older, failing eyes, you know? <laughs> It's painful, yeah. And uh, sometimes after reading three pages, what did I just did I just miss something out? <laughs> I have to read. It. So it's it's very very different now. I mean, very very complex scenarios, yeah. And um, yeah. So it has definitely changed, and I think we're going to change again in our uh, next year, whereby mm -hmm. we're going to start bringing in. Uh, obviously, it's now computer based exams, and we're going to bring in another software called Inflow, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Whereby we analyze big data through either dashboards, pie charts, graph, and from there, we identify issues with the audit or whatever not that's going to be asked. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they will be giving us, again, advanced information. So maybe I right. a few for the exams for us to understand what is the company's business all about. And uh, on the exam day itself, you'll get the exam question. So, okay. Yeah, we're moving very, very closely towards case study now. Yeah. So that right. so I think, exams. especially for all our subjects now, has a lot of uh, the IR four point zero, the Industrial Revolution four point zero uh, elements in there. You know, mm -hmm. especially for um, papers like mine, all right, business strategy mm -hmm. and technology. They've actually yep. changed the subject from business strategy to technology, incorporating uh, all the technological elements. Okay, maybe yep. we could uh, very quickly show some of our audience here how the technologies have actually been uh, incorporated into our syllabus. Sure, sure, please do. Yeah. Then yeah. you can see it's actually embedded in every single one of our papers. Right, as yeah. you can see. Yep, this is year 2020. And I believe that Mr. Ong's uh, inflow system that we are bringing in, which is really mm -hmm. hands-on onto a software, would be brought in in 2021. So that is something that is um, carry. We're still waiting for more uh, information about that. Right, so as you can see, we are going into artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, cloud computing, data analytics, Internet of Things, right? All the loads and whistles and all those things, right? Which is going to be um, the next new thing, right? So which is going to make our accountants even more powerful because of the fact that uh, they are able to uh, use these tools, right? To help them make better judgment, mm -hmm. right? Because with the assimilation of all this information, they are able yep. to be quicker and fast, quick, uh, quicker in decision-making processes. Yep, so definitely. definitely, I believe, you know, that uh, with our syllabus coming in, um, our students will probably have to really focus a lot more on their human intelligence, which we do have embedded a lot of our programs like our interpersonal skills, our thinking skills, our design thinking classes. All those elements is supposed to build the human intelligence part. And with the uh, artificial intelligence coming in, 
right? I think with the two merging together, right, with our human intelligence as well as the um, artificial intelligence, now we call it collaborative intelligence. And I believe our qualification would very easily uh, get our students to be in that particular mindset, right? We call it collaborative intelligence. Wow, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, this is basically, you know, what um, we, our, our students are all prepared for it. Since 2017 already, we are already preparing our students to do that. Okay. You've got so, to a bit of stuff then. You've got to be very, very adaptive. <laughs> Yeah, correct. Adaptability, like our questions, you know, our exam questions, you can see that every single sitting is different, right? Yeah. It's going to be yeah. quite difficult for them to actually manage. And the fact that they actually run through all those questions, that itself is training our students how to be agile, training them how mm. to be adaptable. The key yeah. Um, yeah. skills that is needed in the new century that's coming on. Oh, definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I know they're going to embed a lot of technologies. Like, you know, when I was looking through the CR textbook, they were bringing in all these cloud, cloud bitcoins and all that. I was like, wow. <laughs> it wouldn't be yes, a student now. <laughs> but thank right. God, so, I'm not a student now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to keep up, right? <laughs> no, we still have to keep up to date. Yeah, that is without yep, a doubt. Yep, yep. Get on so, the line. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Now, um, because you've got so many uh, successful students under you, Right, those who have got hundred percent passes, right? Those who've got um, world prizes, right? Do you have any study tips for our expiring uh, chartered accountants? Honestly, to me, education should be fun. Okay? okay, education is not about road learning, whereby you just memorize it. I think that's the way we've been brought up since primary one, even from a kindergarten. I honestly do not buy that at all. I prefer mm -hmm. someone to actually understand it. And then to me, is once you've understand it, it lasts with you forever. It mm -hmm. goes with you all the way, yeah, till we go back to the ground. But if you were to memorize it, obviously it's good enough to pass an exam. And uh, after the exams, it's all gone. It's, it's, yep. it's just one. Yeah, so it's a very hard, I don't know, we have to balance ourselves whether, you know, of course, getting your students to pass is wonderful. And I know it's very, very competitive out there, whereby a lot of our employers, especially in the UK, they are only looking at first attempts. Mm -hmm. And uh, if a uh, second attempt and third attempt, obviously, your chance of getting a job is actually reduced a lot or significantly. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand is, you know, to me, even if you, you know, touch wood, if you don't make it the first round and you actually come back the second time, and it's also character building. It's, okay. Life is never like a bed of roses, so there's always going to be humps here and there. So if you were to take a dive, you see how you react to it. There's no way we can do a season without losing a game. That's, that's quite impossible. Yep. Right? So we lose is how we get up and then uh, challenge ourselves. Always challenge yourself to do the best that you can. Uh, that's what I believe. Understanding the whole thing, it's a lot better than road learning. That is without doubt. And that's why I think uh, you love BST. And yeah. I probably love <laughs> because there, there's no road learning. It's just. Yeah, applying. correct. It's just apply, apply, apply. And there's no one answer that's going to get you to pass the paper. It's just have to think on your feet and you just have to be case specific. All right. So yeah. even if you are going to, you know, bring in our textbooks, all right? Bring in our textbook like you know, SBM and CR level and case studies, right? They may not pass because it's basically solving the problem on the day of the examination. Exactly. Okay. And in the case of the case study, you do get some information to process, yeah. right? But at yeah. the end of the day, it's all about you making that judgment, right? Yeah. Providing yeah. that conclusion after you're structuring yeah. a problem solutions, right? Yes. With all the information that you've assimilated, can you make that decision? And that's yeah. basically what life is because, you know, there's no one answer to how are we going to take on life, right? Nobody yeah. knows exactly, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Whether the government is going to close or open, right? And whether our bosses are going to go back to ask us to go back to college or not go back to college, right? But exactly. we just have to adapt. Yeah. We just yeah. have to adapt. <laughs> yeah, we still, yeah, when we were ordered to go for an MCO on yeah, the yeah, yeah. March, yep, we yep. were only in form 17 and <laughs> we adapt by teaching online just on the dot. Yep, correct. And we still manage. Yeah, we managed it yeah, with WhatsApp or whatever. Yeah. Running around yep. trying to get computers at that point in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. So I, like I, that. That, that's why that's why I say it is so important for us to actually develop our human intelligence, right? Our yeah. interactability, our communication skills, right? Our ability to adapt, you know, like you said, resilience and all that. 
Okay. Yep. Now, those are the things that you know the AI will not be able to replace. Definitely. Right? So yeah. If we develop the human intelligence that we have, right, aggressively, yeah. I mean, very well. Okay. And yep. with that, our ability to um, use the AI. So mm -hmm. we are going to advance to collaborative intelligence. Yeah, yep. that's the key. All right. Yeah. To move forward, that's how it is. And yeah, I believe yeah, I the qualification that we have here, the ICW, really does. Um, Take us through that particular process, the thinking process, the problem-solving uh, process, right? So the ability to 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 uh, pro process to gain insights and be adaptable, right? And with that, manage all the technologies. It's important that we do not let the technologies manage us. Instead, we have to manage technologies. Yeah, definitely. Even I, I know there's been a lot of talks about yeah AI going to replace human beings or all that accountants will lose their jobs and all that. But honestly, there is I don't know it's just superficial thinking. AI we can't embed ethics in AI. There, there, there are a lot of ethics, ethical issues. Correct. Yep. Which are, humans can actually make a decision. AI probably can just choose which one is the cheapest, which one is the fastest, which one is the most yep. efficient. Or not. But there are other things. Would you want to be associated with someone that is a yeah, they are fast, they're cheap, but they're dodgy. They do funny things. Yeah, no. Yep. They, they incline you to uh, do some form of, uh, I don't know, money laundering or whatever not, okay? But uh, yeah, so that is where human element has come into play. So we rest assured, yeah, AI is there without a doubt, okay? It's just that we have to collaborate, like what you said, yeah? To work together and uh, use them to diagnose the data so that we can reach a better decision, more informed, and uh, hopefully that's not right or uh, that's not wrong. Yeah. After all decisions, you know, it could be right at that moment of time, but it could also be wrong if it was like three days day earlier or three days later. Well, it, it's different. Yeah. So how do we measure that there's no proper measurement? So a lot of people just measure is like, oh, how much profit did you make? Uh, is that a, a proper measurement? It, it's like if you, the, 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 the thing is, if you fail, all right, your agility, mm -hmm. your resilience, all right, is going to actually bring you back even stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's all that human skills that is going to be more important, right? So it's that how how in some way we actually yeah, need to definitely. build all this as a key. So maybe we can take some questions from the crowd. Yeah, definitely. I think that that is. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the crowd? Okay, sure. Oh, very quiet. No question. Wow. How I say the build modules will be able to prepare students to handle unexpected crises such as the current pandemic. Mm, again, it's back to our adaptability. Yeah. And uh how we adapt to changes. Of course, uh when it is immediately hits us, then obviously we be there. Mm, there's a setback, but at least yeah, take a step back, calm down, collect back ourselves. Think about it, and then uh, I think yeah, we're just very very adaptable and we're agile. Anything can anything yeah, can happen anytime. Really, so, really, really. How how we train our students in our syllabus, isn't it? Right, you take a step back, yeah, you know, analyze yeah. the information. Right, don't panic. Yeah. You know, so you know how mm -hmm. how we put our students under time pressure and all that. You know, it's all within that. So they just yeah. have to step take a step back and you know see how is it like objectively what would be suitable to to what kind of um, solutions you can take on right from that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, to share, awesome. yeah, just to share what happened to me when I was a student. Okay, I got lots of stories to share. <laughs> All right, so when I was doing the FM paper back then, it was called MIC. Okay, Management Information. I can't remember what it was called. Okay, uh, so normally when we do variance costing or variance accounting, we always are asked to calculate what is the favorable variance or adverse variance. But in the exam. They actually gave us the variance and asked us to calculate the actual cost or the actual mm -hmm. quality. So I would, I would be trained to think from left to right, for example. Yep. And then suddenly now they give us a right, ask us to work backwards. Obviously, yep. I panic. That was a pandemic to me. Immediately. <laughs> I looked at it, I went, oh, and what, what am I doing here? Collect back, step back. I went to the toilet, washed my face, came back, and just take it step by step. Yes, no doubts, I couldn't finish the question, but I think mm -hmm. I just did good enough. Well enough, I, well, yep. I passed the paper. <laughs> so rather than <laughs> like, like, what, you know, like, like what I always tell my students, yeah. right? You know, you have learned the basic algebra. All you have to do is just, you know, don't panic and you know turn things around, right? It's still the same formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have given them all the skills. You just 
have to mm -hmm. step back, right, and mm -hmm. think about, you know, how do I just turn it around? So mm -hmm. it's all embedded in that. Yeah, it's embedded. And just always remember that everyone's on the same page with you. Everyone's on the same mm -hmm. playing field. Everyone is going to be here facing the pandemic together. It's just, yeah, take a step back and uh, calm down, get collected, and then move on again. I think one more thing I can add on to this uh, particular question is that, you know, one of the very important things about our qualification is the ethical values, right? And basically, when uh, such crisis comes about, right, it is very important for the organization to stay true to true values, such as, you know, taking care of the employees, taking care of their um, true meaning of the organization and being a sustainable organization, okay? So, you know, when crisis like this comes in, Okay, so some, some organization have to consider, should I retrench people or should I conserve cash or do you think that, you know, how, how, how will I go about? And if you have a good idea of, you know, the whole syllabus and if you understand that uh, integrity is something that your organization wants to uh, stay on, right, want to ensure that they take good care of their employees, well, possibly look for financing and basically refer back to your financial um, analysis, all right, financial background and treasury and all those things, you go look, look, look for financing. Right, and with that, right, you can easily bounce back. Okay. Sunway Group, right? Yeah, <laughs> in different ways. All right, if you talk about Sunway Group, okay, the, the reason what the, the reason the, the the basic fact that they have uh, a diverse group, right, is not just overnight that they have a diverse group. Okay, yep. that's proper yes. planning. There's risk management in there. Okay, the yep. fact that they've actually got a hospital and they're pushing the hospitals to grow larger and with all the cash in there now, you know, it's all about strategy, and that strategy did not come overnight. Yeah. Right, it's all about that particular business acumen, right? And of course, our country is also a professional accountant, or an accountant, yep. Yep. right? So by, by training, so with that, you know, it's all it's all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so resilience, being able to bounce back. Okay, it all comes with you know risk management as well as understanding your cash flow and staying true to the ethical values of the organization. Right, those are all the most important things. You know, especially during a pandemic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Hope that answers the question. Is there any more? <laughs> any other questions? I don't know. How diversified is the teaching and learning process in ICW in comparison with traditional approaches in other courses? Mm. Well, um, I like to make it fun. I use okay. the rings to honestly to see All right, mm. and I want. To about the intention of bringing them to the cinema is to actually show them internal controls. So yep. Of course, I will hide behind the fact, oh, come, let's go watch a movie together. Yeah, you know, we need to do something. Yep. So, yep. And, uh, every day, sitting down, open the books, read it, and all that, they get a bit bored a while. Huh? So, to show them reality, so well, basically, because a full time student that Jeff has asked it is. They will never, it's quite hard for them to understand what is internal controls. Yeah? But then uh, they see it every day, but they just don't realize that it is actually internal control. So just by bringing them to cinema, buying the tickets, watch the whole movie, buy them a popcorn and a Coke, yeah? they actually then realize, oh, this is actually it. Yeah? Sometimes they don't even understand why the parents write the word paid on the TNB bill. They just think, you really paid, paid huh? why, why, why don't you write on it? But that's a concept. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't want why somebody always has a tag on the tables and the chairs on the OHP or whatever, you know, the visualizer? Why is there a tag there? <laughs> I say, you need a tag book. The first thing you do is write your name, right? Same thing. Why? Ownership. That's it, you know? So that's how I like to do it, yeah? So I don't think that is actually done in other, I don't know, traditional approaches or no. Yeah, I think uh, probably they are questioning about whether, you know, is there... Uh, focus on a lot of exams or whether they're assignment based. Well, because the whole qualification that ICW is exam based, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. uh, of course, we will have to uh, prepare our students for exams. But, like what Mr. Ong says mm -hmm. here, right, the way that we teach, right, has to be something that is applicable in the real world because the scenarios that we are actually going to be facing is all real life scenarios. And we have to ensure that our students are able to uh, apply. Right, and without taking them into the real world, it's not going to be possible for us to actually get them to apply. Okay, mm -hmm. so how do you teach someone how to ride a bicycle? Okay, by giving them a manual to memorize. It's not possible. So, like Mr. Ong, he will take them to the cinema, right, to really see how is it like to do an audit process. Okay, so mm -hmm. in terms of you know the teaching and learning, 
right? So it's all about how we adapt it to suit the way that ICAW wants it, which is to be able to uh, apply. Okay, and on top of that, um, if this particular course is very exam based, but um, Sunway has done it in a way that we have incorporated a lot of other subjects that will focus also on soft skills, because we know that taking exams, taking exams is not going to be sufficient. They need a lot of other soft skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thinking skills, interpersonal skills, all right, developing the ability to, um, for example, the work based learning, all right, real life experience going out. So this course is very well rounded, I would say, right, in some way. Mm -hmm. Definitely lah. You know, with the work-based learning and then uh, I I particularly like the I don't know whether somebody still does this, but we had the, the dressing up session and then the teaching them how to eat properly with uh, the fork and spoons and all that. I the and all that. Uh, yeah, that the one is in the our our hotel school. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. <laughs> we, I don't know, we had it before teaching them how to dress up. Huh? Mm. Right. Yeah, I think real, real experience is important because like, uh, for example, in our CFAP program, the first three months of them when they are in our course, we actually put them in a competition whereby they're supposed to produce a, a business plan. We call it the Nurturing Business Champion Program. So the reason why we designed that program is because uh, it's very good. It's going to be difficult for our students to actually appreciate what um, business is until and unless they actually see how everything is uh, gelled together. So how is it gelled together? We got them to produce a, a business plan. Right, and present it to the, um, the to the to the big accounting firms. All right, to pitch for funding. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is called the nurturing business champion, and this allows them to see how the whole syllabus is, is integrated. And on top of that, we teach them team skills, we teach them presentation skills. Right, so it's essentially something that we do in some way that is uh, bridging the gaps that we find that uh, is needed in the real world. Things like adaptability, agility, and people skills, collaboration. All right, and when you design a product or a plan, very important, they have to also think about empathy of who they are designing it for. And I believe, Mr. Ong, when we um, take them to uh, do all this, it's very important for them to have empathy for the client. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So yep. All, those, all those are embedded in there. Yeah, so, I think also on is that I think even ICW themselves has all these business challenges every year. Yeah, so, yeah, correct. Yeah, so and I think as a, quite well. <laughs> yeah, you can actually join them and uh, you'll be challenging in, uh, against all the, I think, all the universities in Malaysia, right? Yeah, if right. Not, and whereby you're given a case uh, mm -hmm. and within an hour, you've got to analyze it out with all your spreadsheets and you've got to give a presentation in front of, of all the judges. And most of the judges are actually partners from the big four. And uh, yeah, so we do not only just encourage like, road learning or just passing exams. There are a lot of activities from both Sunway as well as ICW that are, yeah, helps to enhance the skill and I show you the real world, I think. Yeah, correct. The, the features are all there. It's up to you to actually go and uh, use it and uh, to maximize it on your own. And I do believe our students are all very, you know, enthusiastic about learning. Whenever we have this kind of competitions, right, there'll be a long queue asking, you know, can we get in, can we get in, you know? So we, we do attract quite a lot of good students in terms of, you know, the, the, the quality that we have, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if you do come in, all right, we can see that you're really studying within a group of people who are very like-minded, okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's one of the key things about uh, doing this course with us. Okay. So um, do we have uh, other questions? How to pass CR? <laughs> Well, study, questions, <laughs> yeah, young people. No, they just got to yeah, look through the public papers. At the end of the day, you've got to understand it. Okay, so basically, if there's an accounting issue, you need to know what is accounting standard that is uh, relevant to it. So for example, okay, just using like a uh, inventory is the issue within the question. So obviously, you need to know IS2, which is uh, inventory has to be recorded at a lower of cost or NRV. Then from then on, what will be the audit steps? It's definitely going to be led on to the audit step. Yeah? So, so from an audit perspective, the risk is obviously is uh, the inventory may be materially misstated in terms of it could have been overvalued or it could be undervalued. So what are the audit evidences available that are, will make you or uh, let you reach an opinion whether it is fairly stated? So maybe things like post year reports, you know, post year and selling prices, stuff like that. Right. It's, a, it's an add-on from uh, AA as well as FAR, right, Indeed. 
Of course, at CR level, they are looking at more complex scenarios, all right? Not just an inventory, but it could be like a leases, you could look at it. All right, but I think I thought it would just be too technical, all right? This is not lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah come right? for class, then you will know. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically a simulation, structure it, find a solution. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have That's other it. questions? So I guess um, that's all for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Ong. Hey, you're right. welcome. Have it was great to have a chat with you. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, have a chat with you too. All right, then. Everybody else, Take thank you. Thank you for night. having us. Bye. Bye. If you have any questions, uh, do contact us. All right. Um, I think we have some information at the bottom. So um, do contact us if you need more information about our program. And do stay tuned for our next week's session. Right, whereby we have Mr. Simon that is going to join us to tell us about uh, tax and tax planning. Okay, so all right, all bye. Right, good night. Bye, good night. everyone. Good night.